welcome to my channel welcome to today the 19th of december and the nice box which is partly this kind of thing but more like this kind of thing so there is oops, sorry there is the nice list this is part of the nice list this is our scratch card that we've got and we've got seven days to christmas yike talk about not being prepared all right, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and please ring the bell for the notifications for when I post and upload because you never know what's gonna happen. And you never quite know what might be in my videos. Um, so yeah, today's adventures and everything else for the weekend. Well, you know, yesterday I was sitting in here with a brush tail possum behind me and um, this feisty little miss stayed here overnight. I went out sometime in the evening, got some leaves for her and um, that kind of thing. Got up this morning early and went to the toilet, checked my phone. There was a message from Wires saying, hey peoples, can you do a pickup? but it needs to be urgently before 9am because the caller needs to go to work. And I'm sitting there at seven o'clock. Made the phone call to whomever it was and yeah, said, yep, yeah, I can go do that. Let me go get dressed. And by the way, I've got a brush tail and we were yakking away for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And um, yeah, off I, trot sophie wakes up while i'm in, on the phone and um, she comes with me and we go and collect a patamelon now you all know a skippy you all know a kangaroo okay a patamelon is kind of like a kangaroo it is a macropod which means that it's got big feet big feet and it's got a hoppy tail so it hops it's got big feet and it's got a pouch because australian animals are all kinds of trippy and weird including this one so this little kangaroo, like it's okay. In normal terms, they get to about a foot and a half tall. And they've got these kind of chubby faces, not quite smiley like the quokkas that you might've seen going around the internet that always seem to have a smile on their face. They're from Western Australia over yonder. So picked up this little paddy, um, tucked up in a flower sack, that the people had found in a dead mum while they were doing a dog walk in the next street and um, found out Hungarian family have been in the, in the state for eight years, going to the markets, storytelling, she's a wood carver. It's amazing the people you meet. Uh, it was just trippy as, it was really, really nice to be able to take this off their hands, let them go and do their thing. And they've got a job number that they can check up on as well. So picked up the paddy and brought it home, settled myself in, got a coffee and stuff, put the paddy into the bean bag, which is what I'm sitting on. Put the paddy into the bean bag behind the brush tail, fixed the brush tail's bedding, cleaned it out, all of that kind of stuff, gave it a drink. Um, gave it fresh leaves and picked up the paddy from the pouch once I had my coffee made and it was feeling a little bit kind of chilly. It was velvety. It had only just got velvet. So it only, they start out pink, which is skin, like the naked cats. And then they go velvety, which is velvet, fluff, fuzz, like peach fuzz. And then they go to fur. Okay, so they can't regulate their heating when they're velvet and pink. So I picked it up and I brought it into the lounge and I had it sitting on my belly uh, while I was drinking the coffee and it still wasn't warming up and I'm messaging a friend and she kind of goes, yeah, yeah, under the jumper is a really good idea, you know, and I'm kind of thinking, yeah, okay. Couldn't really stuff the whole mini pillowcase that it was in and the polar fleece sack that it was in into my top but I went and I got changed I got a top that I could actually you know that was tight because this t-shirt's not tight and um took it out of the polar fleece bag and it was just in the pillowcase bag stuffed down my cleavage and it warmed up 
nicely and it stayed there all the way up and because this is a tight top I was able to move around and pick up things and everything else we coordinated then to um, go to the east coast which is a two and a half hour drive up and there's a little refuge center there that looks after paddies and everything else which is where I did my first trip to so I knew about this place and there was great fish and chips in the town nearby and um, I had teed up with hubby if we were given the position did you want to go for a drive you can say no and he was kind of like no 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 I could, we could do a drive um so yeah we um got the okay that Jeff could actually take the two and we hit the road and yeah just got back so I have been knitting in the car I have cast off my shawl I'll tell you about that in a minute you're you're here for the nice list not for the fun stories of the weird animals but seriously it was trip I'll tell you more about it in a minute okay silk silver bag I've made a mistake I've gone and scratched the wrong one hang on let me so silver bag you scratch the day after okay so you scratch the number after the number on the bag okay because tomorrow is the pillow and tomorrow is the day before just because Katie wanted to do a thing and confuse us all so silver bag scratch the day after the number after this number and then tomorrow when you get the pillow box you scratch the day before so I'm not looking this is advent fabric number three this is I didn't know they did fabric weeks dye works fabric well there's a thing chosen by the designer for the third custom nice list pattern and we all know that tomorrow's threads but we don't know what Ooh, ooh, wow that's a it's a little bit trippy it's a little bit kind of um yellowy it's linen it's it's kind of weak lemon le weak um i don't know what it is it's got surging on one corner oh sorry on one edge but these are unfinished it's not as i got i'm gonna have to watch katie and laura and see what they actually call it so give me a second i'm, I'm blocking the the wrong day that i've so it's kind of straw like you're not going to get the color because my white light is just too glary it's it's kind of straw like 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 a weak tea but also with a kind of hint of gray through it it's um interesting it's um it's quite a neutral oh I, yeah it it's interesting I, i'll say that for it um weak tea dandelion tea even okay mm, not really gonna know anything until we get a floss toss on it are we all right so yeah macropods macropods have great big feet so this thing in its pouch is lying on its back with the feet like all over the top of it do you remember have you ever seen i think it's narnia and i always confuse this there's a bit in Narnia and I think it's in the TV series now that they've got and there are these one footed things that lie on their backs with their foot in the air keeping them dry from the rain and I can't remember what they're called and these one footed thingamajiggies anyway they bounce around but they can't be seen and they something needs to be done to allow them to be seen anyway these macropods this thing is there with two great big feet with long pointy middle toes and this rat's tail with a short stumpy kind of end and it's fluffy fuzzy kind of it's just and the belly was pink because she's still only little she was 320 grams um i'm not sure i can equate anything a small loaf of bread no not even you get 500 grams loaf of bread smaller than a loaf of bread she was tiny uh lighter than a can than a like a soda can um yeah really really small 
she was gorgeous so i gave her some i dropped uh, i was told i could give her some water um and i don't have any syringes i used to have syringes when i was expecting sophie and needed to express colostrum and i don't know where they've gone they're probably still in the freezer with the colostrum in it but no syringes but i did have medicine droppers but when you squirt them it's high powered squirt so all i did was just suction the top and then just drop the water into um the mouse's ma mouth and um yeah she got some water before we left took a picture um of her on the scales initially but took a picture of her with the water as well um you know and checked and it is a girl checked like she has a pouch um as itty bitty as she is and um yeah so we took her up and Jeff has weighed her, he will feed her, he's put her on a warming mat because they can't walk around with kangaroos hanging out of their boobs, breasts, chests, whatever, <laughs> they've got too many. They actually didn't have many in the nursery this time around. Um, yeah, it was, it was just, I don't know, it was very special driving up two and a half hours with a wallaby, you know, with a pat of melon. Um, Danny Cleavage, you know, just squirming occasionally, squawking occasionally. You could hear her rummaging around either as she was licking herself after going to the toilet or looking for teat because she's thirsty. Um, and that was a bit kind of heartbreaking and heart wrenching, but yeah, interesting. And then, of course, when I came to the brush tail this morning and opened the cage, she's just like, <laughs> like, come at me, bitch. You know, it was claws and it was teeth and it was. She was funny. She's feisty. She'll be released, you know. She's got. She'll do what's called a soft release. So she'll stay within a cage, fending for herself, pretty much, just getting fed, learning how to be a possum, and um, and that. So yeah, kind of happy that I wasn't handling her too much. She was fine. She was eating what I was giving her and wolfed down the carrot that I gave her, um, and pooed and weed and spilt the water and all of that kind of thing so she was fine and sophie's now being a troll and trying to be smart by throwing socks at me which is not funny and then she goes and hocks her head on the door okay but look 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 i had a cast off so here is my shawl it is cast off and most of my ends are actually gone um i've woven in pretty much everywhere i can I've just got this last bit of border. I've woven them in, but I haven't trimmed them off. So, you know, that's the, the wrong side, but this is the right side. And I finished with my gorgeous silk rainbow. I don't know what happened with my numbers. I think that it's supposed to be 49 and I've counted and I've counted and I haven't gone wrong, but I've got more of the outer stripes than Maybe I'm meant to, or just I can't count the peanuts. I'm going to have to hit pause and scream at her. And you don't need to hear that. Um, so, yeah, she's done. All I have to do now is block it. I have no idea how to do that. I've never blocked before. I have got some blocking pins. But with the weight, you can actually see the colours coming through. I'm, of course... Um, expecting you to be interested in knitting otherwise well, see ya um but look at it isn't it gorgeous and the colors are just insane now the colors are mostly oops it doesn't go both ways the colors are partly hubby's fault he helped choose the um the colors for this one so yeah i don't care i between the colors and okay i mean major faux pas here that apparently should have been more like um, inside out. But because of the colours that I chose and the variegation, I think it works because there's texture within the colour anyway. It's just maybe not as stretchy as Stephen might have intended with the actual stitch that he was intending. Um, but yeah, I, look, yeah, no, I'll definitely wear this. It's the kind of thing, you know, I might wear into work and... It's very loud and it's glittery. It's got the Stellina in the purple. It's the only glittery one. The rest is just variegated. 
Um, there's a mix with double knit and with fingering weight, so it's probably heavier than maybe it could be as well. Um, but look, and there's mistakes in it, but you'd have to really um, be sticking your nose in. And <laughs> Goodness me. She's been really good. She actually fell asleep on the way up, which is fairly normal. Um, and then was chattering away. And even with the crazy driving, Hubby has a couple of twisty turns that he likes driving hard. Progressive driving, as I call it. Um, yeah, no, it was fun. And the fish and chips were gorgeous. Um, we did get the Wi-Fi password too, so that was handy. Um, yeah. Oh dear. Right. So tomorrow is my insane day at work. Um, I tell you what I'm going to do though. I'm going to bring the fabric and I'm going to bring box 20 into work. And if I get 10, 15 minutes, I might record at work. And um, it's just a change of scenery for you guys. And we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So I will catch you guys tomorrow. I will go and unwind. And just breathe. Um, for now. Um, get a scissors and trim all my weavings. And yeah. Oh, the other thing I was doing, which I didn't bring in here. Um, I then, when I finished this, I started, well, I didn't start, I continued crocheting the Christmas lights piece that Mrs. Coffee had been teaching us how to do. And that includes, um, color changes and everything else in the corner to corner. That's interesting. And I made a mistake in what I placed, where I placed one of my colors. So I had to rip out two or three rows and that was a bit meh. So I'm going to try and catch up with that, get rid of all my funky wool everywhere kind of feel and get to start and then I may stitch some of my fabulous form. Um, but I didn't get to join in with the Black Needle Society's uh, chat this morning because of our trip, um, which was a bit of a shame. I was looking forward to being able to do that, but you know, doing something for an animal that couldn't do anything. Um, I think it was much more fulfilling and spent family time and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Hubby's in the lounge watching, I don't know, Narcos or something foreign. I don't know. I'll catch up with him in a minute. All right. Okay. Um, we'll see you for a change of scenery tomorrow then. Thanks for joining me and I'm, yeah. Bye for now.